Soil is mysterious and miraculous. It's time to get serious about restoring the health of our soils and how we can best remineralize them. By weight, the vast majority of life on land consists of microorganisms in the soil, and all other life relies on it for sustenance. In soil, there are two types of organisms. One we'll call the composers. They are the agents that use rock dust nutrients to make previously unavailable nutrients available to plants. Many composers turn carbohydrates from photosynthesis into stable carbon compounds, such as components of a mysterious matter called humus. The other agents we'll call the decomposers. They attack organic compounds and things like plants and release carbon back into the air as CO2. There is a constant battle between the two agents. Some creatures like earthworms are both composers and decomposers. In healthy soil, organisms eat certain types of rock and create a miraculous variety of complex compounds. So let's break down this miracle called soil life and get real about increasing it. Did you know a healthy spoonful of soil is home to over a billion life forms? Whoa! Besides the internet, that's like having a whole world at your fingertips. So why is it that today, apples yield more fruit per acre than at any time in history, and yet the nutritional value of apples has plummeted? The answer lies in soil health and nutrient density. Today, you have to eat three to four apples in order to get the same level of certain nutrients from eating just one apple in 1965. Scientific American cited a nutritional drop on average for up to 43 nutrients, while other studies found a 15 to 30% drop in certain nutrient content. So before we go blasting off into space, maybe we should first consider soil, the final frontier. These are the voyages of the microbial enterprise to seek out strange new worlds and civilizations to boldly go where... Oh yeah, now back to you, David. Practically speaking, the pillars of regenerative agriculture are a great place to begin if you want to really impact the planet, even starting in your own backyard. It's about nourishing soils without synthetic chemicals and minimal to no disturbance, keeping soils that are constantly covered with diverse crops whose roots richly feed the soil food web and in turn us. But what about the science of soil? Some scientists focus on ancient soils, such as those in Africa, but often more fertile soils are relatively young ones created after the end of the last ice age 10,000 years ago. The most fertile soils come from glaciers grinding rocks into rock dust, a period called the climatic optimum around 5,000 years after the glaciers receded. This length of time allowed soil life to flourish with wild animals and produce a fertile rich soil with many unextracted available rock nutrients. A biological chemistry is alive in soils through what's called cation exchange capacity, which measures the soil's ability to hold positive nutrient ions such as calcium and magnesium. Components such as clay particles and a mysterious matter called humus also play an important role. Ideally, soil cations are attached to soil nutrient ions for plant availability. Composting and mulches play a big part to keep this healthy exchange capacity alive. 
This living chemistry brings us to consider two very different teachers and schools of thought within this world of soil science. Dr. William Albrecht was a respected professor renowned for determining the ideal amount of nutrients in the soil. He observed that 68% calcium ions and 12% magnesium, along with lesser amounts of phosphate and potassium, created an optimal Goldilocks ratio where balanced growth occurs. A true pioneer in soil science, Dr. Albeck suffered criticism for his groundbreaking theories on what makes soils, plants, and ultimately animals healthy. This was because he diverged from his other mainstream peers by not embracing the big three nutrients, nitrogen, potassium, and phosphorus, as the end-all of nutrition. This other and opposing end-all school of learning began in 1840 with a German chemist named Justus von Liebig. Von Liebig isolated some of the primary elements used by plants and then produced them chemically. He saw increased growth from applying the chemical nitrogen and potassium to the test soil. This discovery marked the beginning of the chemical fertilizer age that still persists today. For decades, mainstream soil science focused on the manufactured fertilizers, ignoring other essential elements for healthy plant growth, which result in plants that are imbalanced, inviting insects and other parasites to attack them. So let's talk about positive solutions and follow Albrecht's methods to rebalance the soils back to a golden ratio. There would be greatly reduced demand for fertilizer products if it was widely known and promoted that available and affordable rock dust nutrients, which are a waste product of mining operations, can dramatically revitalize soil and grow nutritious plants. Nature rebounds really quickly, so with the right care, we can change things fast by jump-starting topsoil via remineralization, regenerative farming practices like holistic grazing, and with large regional terraforming. Some examples of the latter are planting on contour using bioswales, key lining the land with a subsoil ripper that slows and spreads rainfall to soak in, as well as puncturing small holes in hard desert soil then putting organic matter plus seeds to create microenvironments for plants to grow. These planting holes could be further improved by adding nutrient-activated biochar and rock dust, which we'll cover in more episodes. To scale up this kind of landscape restoration, public and private institutions, along with charities, could fund real impact to contract young generations of climate activists, returning veterans as well as labor groups to do public projects that would regenerate enormous landscapes like the southwestern U.S. We can also look to permaculture as a practical climate solution. Permaculture is a growing international movement that offers a different way of looking at the land and how we create value from it. Permaculture aims to create a holistic, multi-species, nearly permanent environment that sequesters nutrients and water on the land, using plant growth to build healthy soil through composting and mulching. These shovel-ready solutions are essential for long-term sustainability within our water, energy, food potential. With us now to close out this episode is Mr. Brian Russ, a seasoned professional of soil revitalization, biology, and the head of Sustainable Growth Texas, a company that has pioneered microbial products for major grassland restorations. Howdy, Brian. Let's talk about the miracle of soil life. The biology is really everything in the soil. Without it, it's just, without it, the soil and plants are very inefficient. Um, the, the relationship between soil biology, the, the minerals in the soil and the plants is, if there ever was a perfect relationship, that would be it. Um, the, the plants, through what's called root exudates, 
they send a signal to the biology to say, I need calcium today, or I need magnesium, or I need sulfur, or whatever it is. Yeah. And the biology supplies whatever the plant needs at the time it needs it, in the form it needs it, and in the amount that it needs it. And without that, sort of the modern way of chemical agriculture would be to just keep the soil full of highly soluble salt based fertilizers so that the plants can draw from that any time they need. It's kind of like doing an end run around the biology, but it's a very inefficient system and very expensive and does nothing to help the soil or the, the biology. I mean, without biology in the soil, it's just dirt. Tell us a little bit about uh, how what you guys do with Sustainable Growth Texas, how that kickstarts the uh, and, and increases the the life for grasslands in Texas. We make the compost extract, which we have a machine called an extractor that strips the biology off the compost, and, and it's just it's a liquid becomes a we call it LCE liquid compost extract. And then we, that's pumped onto a truck to be sprayed out. But to that, we can add basically anything that can be dissolved in water. And so if we have access to a soil test, we know, you know, what's missing. We're not going to replace, you know, if it says the soil is 2,000 pounds of calcium, is lacking 2,000 pounds of calcium per acre, we're not going to do that. But we're going to we're going to give the biology in the soil and the biology that we're applying enough calcium so that it's healthy and doing its thing. And and on a soil test, a chemical soil test, you won't see much of a change, other than what's there will become more available. And that's a huge issue. Is there's a lot of minerals in the soil, but they're not available to the plants because the biology is not there or the organic level is too low. Or, 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 other, or the pH can be wrong. Uh, we don't get really hung up on pH. The biology can, can correct pH. Some people use the firm microbial bridge between the plants and the soil. And, and there's always some amount of biology in soil, but we're able to add more by adding extract. And we can also, if a person, so say like a yard or a garden or flower beds, those are, are bacterial type growing conditions. But a, a native prairie, they're more fungal. And so you can tweak the blends according to what you're doing. If we're just, we're spraying somebody's yard in Austin, we know we can be bacterial. If, if we're, someone's trying to develop or maintain a prairie, then we need to be more fungal. And that's where the type of compost comes and then to the, we can also add to the liquid compost extract, we can add bacterial foods or fungal foods just depending on the needs of the plant. The old saying is you are what you eat. Well, the same applies to animals. So if they're grazing healthy plants on a healthy soil, they're going to be healthier. The you know the reproductive rates are going to be higher because ranching is about raising animals, raising babies, you know. And then those babies are going to gain weight faster, and the meat that they that's harvested from them is going to be healthier for the people that are eating it. But it all begins with the soil. If you don't have healthy soil, you don't have healthy food to feed the people, and their operation becomes more profitable. Yeah, yeah, and. and and it all takes, you know, it takes a change in management. We have to be really careful with our customers that if they're not going to change their management, and they're, they're probably not going to do them much good. If they've always had too many cattle, and every time a grass plant shoots up a leaf, there's six cows to bite it off, they're not going to see any results from our products. We have to really sort of sit them down. And, and I do, it's, it's odd, but I spend time talking customers out of these in our service because I know we're not going to do them any good. <laughs> Interesting. 
Yeah, management practices play a large part in in how healthy your grasses are. Right, and we use the term just jump starting natural process. If a person said, "Okay, I'm committed to regenerative agriculture. We're going to mob graze. We're not going to graze too short. We're going to have adequate rest." They're you know they're going to start healing their soil right then, but we can speed the process up. We're not get there. It, there's a succession to plants and soil, and and you can't skip steps, but you can speed the process up, and that's all what our problem. They say all all flooding is man made. Whether it's it's there's not enough healthy soil covered in grass out in the country, you know, to hold the water, or it's all that's concrete in in town. But the, the parks we've worked with. During Hurricane Harvey, we had 40 inches of rain in 36 hours or something like that. And and the, the park that's kind of our, um, oh, it's sort of our showpiece. It had, I don't know, 30, 40 feet of water in it. And when the water went down, we lost one tree. And it's wow. just because the ground was so soft, the roots couldn't hang into the soil, and the tree just fell over. But we didn't have to replant flower beds or turf or anything. Wow. And it's just, it's all about soil health, whether it's a garden or a park, drainage basin or a prairie or anything. Get real, child. Let's get.